here. Okay, so now I want to talk about significant figures. And um, our significant figures are going to be really important in this class, as well as like the rest of your science classes. Okay, so um, I'm going to walk you through. So here's all of the rules. Instead of like reading you all these rules, we're just going to walk through some examples. Okay, so I'll just kind of hit on these um, very briefly. So there's non-zero integers, there's zeros, and there's three different types of zeros, and then there's exact numbers. Okay, so anything that's non-zero, so one through nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, are always significant figures. Okay, um, but zeros, it depends on what they are. So a leading zero does not count as significant. Okay, so a leading zero is anything that precedes a non-zero digit or a decimal. So for example, right here, okay, we have 0 0.0025. The leading zeros don't count. So in this number, 0 0.0025, there's only two significant numbers, and that's the two and the five, okay? Captive zeros are zeros between non-zero digits, and they definitely count. So 1.008, for example, has four sig figs. Okay, and then we have trailing zeros, which are the end of the number, and they are only significant if there's a decimal point. For example, when you write 100, <coughs> excuse me, when you write 100, there's only one significant number, okay? But if I write 100 point, now these two significant number, these two zeros count now, and I know this looks really goofy to write 100 like this, but this is uh, legit. This is how we do it, okay? But also, if you wrote 1.00 times 10 to the 2, that also has three significant digits because the zeros following the decimal point count as significant. And then finally, we have exact numbers. Um, and exact numbers count as things that we um, can count up, like 10 experiments, 3 apples, or 8 molecules. The definitions and rules. Um, so let's move forward and do um, some examples, okay? So there's uh, two operations or two classes of operations we want to think of when counting significant figures. Um, multiplication and division, um, those both have the same rule, so I'm going to loop uh, or combine them together rather, okay? And um, I want to get rid of that. There we go. Okay. So um, when we do multiplication and division, it's all about um, the number of sig figs, right? We've got to count them up just like we said in the rule. And the number of sig figs in the final answer is the same as the number of sig figs in the least precise number. So what does that mean? Well, the least precise number is the number with the least amount of sig figs. So for example, if I take 10.2 times 1.4, and you do that in your calculator, you're going to get 14.28, okay? So if we count up those sig figs, right, we know that zero is a captive zero, right? So there's one, two, three sig figs. Um, here in 1.4, there's no zeros, so one and four are always significant, so there's two sig figs. But now when we do this multiplication, we got four sig figs, right? One, four, point two, eight gives me one, two, three, four sig figs. Well, remember, the number of sig figs in the final answer has to be the same as the number of sig figs in the least precise number. So the least precise number had two significant figures, so our final answer can only have two significant figures. And this is where we have to remember um, rounding in the rule of five, right? So this 14.28, um, if I were to round it, to three sig figs, it would be 14.3, so eight is greater than five, so that makes this go up to a three. But now, in getting this 14.3 down to two sig figs, three is less than five, so it rounds down just to 14, and not 14.0, because if I wrote 14.0, that would be three sig figs. So just one four, 14, 
Okay, so here is another example. 100 times 0.0254, okay? So when you throw that into your calculator, you're going to get 2.54. However, look, how many sig figs are in each of these numbers, okay? Well, 0 0.0254 only has three because the leading zeros don't count. But this number 100 only has one, okay? So technically this final answer, and if we go by my rule of five, right, um, we can, so five, we can round it up. So this means this answer is only gonna be three. So we lost a lot of information there from this only having one sig fig. But now what if we wrote this as 100 points, or another way to write this would be 1.00 times 10 to the two. Both of those would be the same way of writing 100, but with three significant digits. Then we'd have three and three, so our answer would be 2.54, okay? So it helps to understand how to um, count what is significant from these rules um, and then use these math operations from there, okay? So what about addition and subtraction? Well, addition and subtraction make another group because they have the same rule. And so with addition and subtraction, it's the number of decimal places in the final answer is the same as the number of decimal places in the least precise number. So this is just a little bit different than the multiplication, okay? So for example, if I was adding 12.11 plus 18.0 plus 1.013, all right? Obviously these all have different sig figs, right? 12.11 is four, 18.0 is three, and 1.013 is four. But with addition and subtraction, it's all about the decimal places. So the key here is to line these up, okay? And we can see what decimal place they have in common. And you notice here, they all have a tenths spot, right? That 18.0 doesn't have a one hundredths decimal place. So that means our final answer is only gonna go to the tenths place, one decimal play, place, okay? So that's our rule with addition and subtraction. And I think if you wanna line the numbers up, like elementary school arithmetic, you know, line it up from top and down, line up the decimal place, that's a good strategy. That's perfectly okay to do, okay? So let's work through a few examples. Um, and this time I'm just gonna kinda like work, work our way through them together, okay? Um, and so here, uh, number A, um, we've got 6.022 times n to the 23, so that's one number, times 1.05 times 10 to the 2, okay? So now, how many sig figs do we have? Oops, sorry, uh, I'm confusing myself even. So I should have put a parentheses around this. So you should interpret this as 1.5 times 10 to the 2, times 6.022 times 10 to the 23, okay? So here you can see I've got one, two, three, four sig figs here and three sig figs here. So my final answer is gonna have three sig figs. So when I plug that into the calculator, and don't forget to take advantage of that E button I show you guys, right? Let's, let's do that one more time so you can see how I do the E button, okay? So I'm gonna say, ooh, six point Oh, two, two. Do that capital double E, 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 23 times 1.05, and I'm going to use that E, E button again, which is the same as just saying times 10 to the power 2, and equals. Okay, so I get a whole bunch of digits in my calculator. 6.3231 times 10 to the 25. We recognize this should only have three significant digits. So it's gonna be 6.32, 6.32. This extra three right here, it's less than five. So it's not gonna influence this two to round up, okay? So that is 6.32 times 10 to the 25. So now let's do part B. And you can see part B here, let me try to clear that, clarify that for you. That's 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 
times 2.998 times 10 to the 8, all divided by 2.54 times 10 to the minus 9. So we have three sig figs from this number. We have one, two, three, four sig figs from this number, and one, two, three, four sig figs from this number. So our final um, answer is only going to have three sig figs. And I'm just going to give you the answer here. You should practice this on your calculator, pause the video, and make sure you get to the same value that I get. 7.82 times 10 to the minus 17 power. That's a times 10 to the minus 17 power. Let's make that look a little better because I'm going to save all of this and export it. And you might be like, what the hell does that say? Okay, 6.82 times 10 to the minus 17. So now part C, look, this is a bunch of addition. And uh, it's a bunch of addition with all of these uh, scientific notation. And when you get to this, I take the advantage of like lining these up and writing these out as decimals, okay? So 1.25 times 10 to the minus 2. So if I go 1, 2, that means I can write that as 0 0.01285, okay? And then now 1.24 times 10 to the minus 3, I can go 1, 2, 3. And then that goes uh, as 0 0.00125. And then now 1.879 times 10 to the minus 1, that just goes 1, and then that means it's 0 0.1879. And so now when I line all of these up and add them, okay, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal places, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 decimal places, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 decimal places. It's that fourth decimal place. So the 8, the 2, and the 9, okay? So when I add all of that up, my calculator gives me 0 0.20199, but I need to have four decimal places, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's the fourth decimal place. You can see that fifth decimal place is a 9, so that's going to cause me to round up this whole thing to 0 0.20. Zero to zero. Okay, let's box off the answers so we know later what the answers were, okay? So doing this addition and subtraction, take your time to line them up if you can't see it right away. Okay, so what about this letter D that has mixed operations, right? It has a subtraction and then a division. So we need to follow the order of operations in math um, which says we're going to do the subtraction step first. So when I count these decimals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oh great, they both have the 5, um, so I can keep that. And when I do this subtraction on top, I'm going to get 0 0.00138, so we said 5 decimal places, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then now divide by that 6.02205 times 10 to the 23. And now, because I'm doing division, it's no longer about the number of decimal places. It's about, it's all about the number of significant digits. So this number, 0 0.00138, while it has five decimal places, it only has three significant digits. And then this number down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 significant digits, Three is the least number of sig figs, so three is going to be in our final answer. And when I go and do that math, I get 2.29 times 10 to the minus 27 with one, two, three significant digits. Okay? Okay, and then now finally we have another um, <clears throat> mixed case on the bottom here. We have a subtraction followed by a division and then it says times 100 and it's telling us 100 is exact and if you recall from these rules here um, with exact numbers exact numbers don't count okay towards sig figs so if you know something is exact like in this case if this was maybe 100 percent you're multiplying it by 100 to convert it to a percentage then that's an exact number and that doesn't count okay so if we go uh here this has one two three decimal places and this has one, two, three decimal places. 
okay? But you also notice that these are rather big numbers, right? So I'm gonna rewrite that as, um, so times 10 to the two, one, two, means that's 987.5 minus uh, one, two, 979.5. All right, and so now you can see each of these has that uh, one decimal place. So that's going to give me 8.0. That zero counts because they both have that decimal in common. All right, and then now that's going to be 8.0 divided by 9.875 times 10 to the 2, and so now one, two, sig figs, compared to one, two, three, four sig figs, it's got to be two in the final answer. And of course, we know that this was times 100, but the 100 doesn't count. So I'm going to say 8.0 divided by 987.5. And I get, um, and then times 100. And I get uh, 0. Point one. This is what my calculator says, and you can see it's 0 0.810, but that 0 is not going to influence the 1 to get rounded up. So that's the answer there, and this is the answer here. Okay, so those are some pretty good examples. Just a couple more slides to go, and we'll be done with this first week of lecture notes. All right, folks? So here we go.